Welcome today to today's webinar, More Than Just Cloning, Editing Report Templates. Today, we're going to start by talking about how to decide what, it, what template to start with, some recommended basic edits. We're going to go over what a core source is and why it matters. And then we'll look at how to edit display fields and filters to change the data that you see in your report output. And we'll finish up by talking about the dangers of using obsolete templates and how you can maintain uh, your templates. So I'm just going to switch us over to Evergreen now. Uh, so here in Evergreen, we're going to go to Administration and Reports. And when editing a template, you usually are going to start in the shared templates under templates on the live server. It's the Sitka templates here on our training server. It's the Greenland templates. And you'll want to pick a template here to start from. So you'll modify this template, but you'll have something to start with. The existing Sitka templates are widely varied and they cover hopefully most of the reporting needs for a library. When choosing a template that you want to modify or, or use, there's some initial considerations to think about. First of all, what kind of data are you looking for? Are you wanting information about your patrons, about your items, uh, statistical information about your circulations, information about holds, etc.? And are you looking for counts or are you looking for a list? So do you want a count of how many items have a particular attribute or are you looking for a list of patrons with overdue items? And what do you want to be able to filter on? So do you want to be able to choose a particular patron type or shelving location? Are you looking for a report that looks at a month in time or do you want to cover a more specific period of time? And what information is going to be critical to have included in that output so that you can work with the report? A report that lists all of the items that you have with the status of missing so that you can go and check the shelves probably isn't actually going to be very helpful if it doesn't include the call numbers. Um, and the reporter is very powerful and can report on almost anything, but there are a handful of reports that can actually only be generated by pulling the data directly from the database. So if you're not finding a report that's close to what you need, uh, rec we recommend contact and co-op support, and we can either point you to the existing report that's close to what you need, or in some cases, we'll create a custom report for you or pull the data directly from the database. So today we're going to start by saying that we want a report that gives us a count of items by status and shelving location. So looking at the Sitka templates, I'm going to start with the collection folder because I'm looking for information about my items. And I'm wanting a count, so I'm going to start with the item and title count folder. And I'm going to switch limit output to all to make sure that I'm seeing all of the templates in this folder. This folder has less than 10. Um, another one that we look at later uh, has more than 10. So you definitely want to make sure you're uh, switching that limit output to all. There's no existing template here for a title and copy or sorry, title and item count by shelving location and item status. But we do see that there's one here for title and item count by shelving location, which is close to what we're looking for. So if I check that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say create a new report from selected template. I'm not actually going to run the report, but I just want to see what columns it has there. So I'm going to click Submit. And here we can see this report uh, includes the call number owning library, circulating library, shelving location, title count, and item count. And it filters on the circulating library as well as having uh, two hard-coded filters here. And these are filters that you'll see in a lot of templates um, to do with items. So the first one here, the call number volume ID not in list minus one, that's excluding pre-cataloged items from this uh, report. And the item is deleted equals F for false is excluding any deleted items from this report. 
So this report has almost everything we need. It just doesn't include item status. So I'm gonna take us back to the item and title count folder, select that template again, and this time I'm gonna clone it so that I can uh, get into the reporter editor. Now, before you edit reports, um, in some cases you may want to run the current uh, report template to see what the output looks like. Um, and in that case, you do want to make sure you also clone that into your own folders rather than run it directly off the Sitka template. Um, but in this case, we're not going to run the folder, or sorry, the, run the template. We're going to start by making some changes. So to start with, it's a good idea to make sure that your template name and description reflect what your template does. So we're gonna start by editing this report to show item status as well as shelving location. So we want that to be reflected in the name and the description. So when we go to run this report later, we know what the, the template's going to do. So I'm gonna update the name here. And I'm also gonna update the description here. And depending on what you're uh, doing, you may want to include information about the original template in the description. So you can put uh, however much text you want into that description field. There's also a field for documentation URL, and this can be used if you have local documentation available uh, online that's related to the report. So maybe you have a manual with a procedure on how to handle missing items, and you want to include that link on a template that gives a list of missing items. Uh, we don't use the documentation URL on the Sitka templates very much currently, but if you've run the circulation policy report, uh, you may have noticed that there is a link there that takes you to the circulation policy documentation that we have. So moving down to the next section of the report editor, uh, we have what's called a core source here, and this is the table that you start with. Um, so in this case, this template is starting with the item table in the database. When you're editing an existing template, it's really crucial not to change the core source. So if we went to change the core source here, we'll change it to ILS user, we get this pop-up that tells us we've started building a template. If we choose a new start starting source, it's going to destroy the current template and we're going to have to start over. So we're going to hit cancel because we don't actually want to do that. I'm just going to switch that back to item here. Um, so yeah, so you want to choose a template that uses the core source you're wanting to start with. Um, otherwise, you're going to be building a new template uh, completely from scratch. The most common sources uh, that you'll see are circulation. Um, and that's where it contains circulation records that can be used for circulation statistics and overdue reports. Uh, ILS user, which we uh, selected a moment ago, um, that's where your patron records are held and that can be used for patron related reports. And here we have the core source of item and that contains item records that we can use for reports on your collection or items that meet a specific criteria. Uh, for example, if you want a report of items in a particular shelving location. Um, and as you're working with report templates and the Sitka templates, it's useful to note the core sources that are being used and what data you're getting on those report templates um, so that you get an idea of what types of reports you can create using the different sources. So now we're going to add a display field. And down here in the display field section, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have rows set to 25. Um, there's currently a bug where Evergreen will only save the visible display fields. Um, so if this is set to 10 and your uh, report template has a lot of uh, row or display fields, um, not all of them will be saved and the template that you get won't be quite what you're expecting. 
Um, so we recommend setting it to at least 25 and then using the uh, menu there, you can save your columns. Uh, and then next time it'll automatically default to 25 rows. So now we're gonna add the display field for item status. But we wanna look at the source paths for the existing display fields. You'll note that the source includes the word inner, uh, sorry, the paths include the word inner in bracket. What this means is that nullability is being used in the report. And nullability allows you to have more control over whether or not null values are included in your output by giving you control over the type of join between the database tables. Now, if you're interested in learning more about nullability, um, we do have a link both in our documentation and it'll be on our handout to the Evergreen Conference presentation, Thanks for Nothing Nullability Selection in Evergreen Reports that focuses on nullability. In general, um, what you can do though is just make sure that the join that you're using matches what the other display fields are. So for this one, because we see that this has an inner join, when we add an additional display field, we're gonna make sure it uses an inner join as well. Um, and honestly, when working with nullability, I either copy what the existing template is doing or I ask uh, Tina for assistance. So to find the field to add it, we're gonna start by clicking on item. And this displays the fields that are in the item table. And the icons here indicate the data type. So for example, active date and time has a calendar to indicate that it's a timestamp. Uh, the A is a text field. Uh, circulating library has a tree, which is an org type. Um, and as well, we have these links. Now, before we talk about what the link means, I'm just gonna take us over to the documentation because we do have uh, all of the data types listed, explaining what they are and uh, some notes about them. Um, and you can see we've got a little uh, screenshot here showing what each of those icons stands for. Now, the important thing with these is that when it's a link, it's indicating that it's actually connecting to a different table in the database. So if we scroll down here, cause we're looking for item status, we can see that item status is actually showing as a link. And if we just selected item status here and added our field, it's not gonna work cause we're not actually linking to the information in the item status table. So what we need to do is come back over here on the left. I'm gonna use the arrow to expand uh, down and go back and find item status. And now that I've clicked on item status, it's showing us the fields that are available in the item status table. So I want to include the name because I want to know what item status uh, the items are counted in. So I'm going to choose name and for transform, I'm going to choose raw data. And then I'm going to click, and sorry, actually, I'm going to also click nullability here at the top. So when I have item status, I'm going to change that to none nullable, which is the equivalent of an inner join. And this is also in our documentation. Um, click on name there, click on raw data, and click add field. So we now have a field at the very bottom here um, that is item status. It's got that inner join. The column label though is name, which isn't the most useful. So we're gonna select this line and from the actions menu, we're gonna click change column label. And now we can give it uh, a different name. So I'm gonna call it item status and click okay there. And now the column is item status. This is particularly important um, when you're working with fields like library or barcode, um, because you wanna make sure you know what library is in that column or what type of barcode is in that column. 
Um, for example, on this one, we have call number owning library and circulating library. For some libraries, that's always going to be the same. But if your library is multi-branch or if you participate in reciprocal borrowing, the owning library and the circulating library may not be the same. Um, and it's important to know which column is the owning library and which column is the circulating library. Same with barcodes. You want to make sure you know uh, a column is item barcodes versus patron barcodes. So good to make sure uh, those are renamed as needed. Now we want to uh, rearrange the columns though, because I don't want item status to be my last column. So I'm gonna select that. And from the actions menu, I'm gonna choose move up. I have to do this a few times to get it where I want it. So I'm gonna move it up again. And you can see, I can also move the field down. So I now have it right after shelving location. And when I run my report, um, the columns are gonna sort by default top to bottom, which on the report will be left to right. So it's going to sort by the owning library, then the circulating library, then the shelving location, then item status, and then the title and the item counts. And I'm going to come back to field transforms for a moment. Um, so the transform is what determines how the data is processed when Evergreen generates the output for you. Raw data, which is what we used for item status, is the most commonly used transform except when you're working with timestamps and then you're much more likely to use a date related transform. You can also see though that in this template, we have field transforms for count distinct and count. And these are generally applied to the ID data type and used to count records. So uh, counting circulations, counting items, counting bibliographic records, counting patrons, et cetera. The reason there's a count distinct and a count is because count tallies the total number of records while count distinct tallies the records but removes the duplicate. So it's looking at the unique records. So item is using count because we want a count of all the items, but title is using count distinct because we wanna count the unique records. We don't wanna count a record five times if your library has five items attached to it. So we're getting a count of the unique bibliographic records and then a count of all of the items. And that's why you'll see title count and item count uh, have different totals. Um, so the one other thing I'll mention while we're here um, is it's also very easy to remove fields. And you'll find with some of our templates, we have more columns and, and fields in there than you might need. Um, for a lot of our templates, what we've tried to do is include all of the fields that you might want to be reporting on um, because it's a lot easier to remove fields than to add new ones. So if you're adjusting a report, what you may find is that there's information being included that is just not relevant to you um, for what you're trying to do. So you can select the field and from the actions menu, just click remove field. I'm not gonna do that in this case, but if I did, the field would just disappear. Now, I'm just gonna take us to look at owning library for a second. So I'm following the path, it's call number volume and then owning library. And sorry, I just need to move Zoom out of the way here. Um, so you can see for a library, we have a name field. Um, we also have an organizational unit ID. And when you're adding display fields for things like libraries, shelving locations, item statuses, et cetera, you're going to see both that name and ID. And it's important to make sure when you are adding uh, the display fields that you use the name field, because that's going to give you the name of whether it's the library or the shelving location or the item status. Whereas if you choose the ID, that's going to give you the unique ID number that is saved in the database. And for example, for Maple, the organizational unit ID is 10. And that's generally not going to be useful information for you, um, because you probably don't know what the or unit ID for your neighboring libraries is. So if you have a reciprocal borrowing 
uh, report that lists everybody by ID number, it's not going to be as useful as actually having the library names there. So make sure you're picking name, not ID for display fields. Now, before we hit save on this template, I'm just going to take us uh, to the uh, section in our manual on the Evergreen database. So we have this very simplified diagram of the tables and the connections among them. And so what we've done today is we've started with the item table and then we've linked it over to item status to get the name. And you can use this simplified diagram to get kind of a sense of how the different tables connect in the database. Um, for example, you'll notice that item and bibliographic record don't have a direct link. They actually link through the call number. Patron and item also don't link directly. They link through circulation, the circulation table or through the hold request table. Um, so as you go through to find the fields that you want to add, um, you sometimes need to go through other tables to get to your ultimate destination. So when we did uh, owning library, we went through uh, item to call number and then to owning library, which is not, um, or it's listed here uh, in the call number uh, bucket there. Um, so definitely recommend coming, taking a look at uh, this diagram. But as I said, it is a simplified diagram. There are a lot more tables in the database that are not uh, represented on this diagram. So we've added our field, uh, we've updated the description, we've updated the name, um, and we're gonna save our template using the save template uh, button in the upper left. And we can now run this template to see what our collection looks like sorted by shelving location and item status. I'm not actually going to run the template because I already have. Um, so we're going to come over to here. So this is what we get as output. We've got our call number owning library, our circulating library, our shelving location, the item status, and then the title and item counts. And uh, it has the default sort. We can also click on the uh, column headers, which will sort it again. But maybe we decide that we actually want our report template to be call number owning library item status and then shelving location. So we'd go back in, clone the template, and just simply move the column one up. And then if we ran the report again, we would get this output. So now we have owning library, circulating library, item status, and shelving location. It's exactly the same data. It's just presented in a different way um, and has a different default sort because of the order of the columns. So now we're going to come back into the reporter. And this time we're going to put together a template because we want shelving location, a list of items in a selected shelving location with item status. So if I come back into the shared folders and templates and into the Greenland templates and collection, this time, because I want a list, I'm gonna go into item list by item attributes. And I'm gonna switch the limit output to all uh, because there are definitely more than 10 templates in this folder. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna find the shelving location items with selected shelving location. So I'm gonna use that as my starting template. Select that. Again, I can go in to run the report and see what columns are already included and what filters are used. So we can see we've got quite a few different columns that are included by default in this report template. And we have filters for shelving location, circulating library, and a filter to exclude deleted items. So if we come back into that folder, Going to check that 
template again, and this time go clone selected template and submit. So this time we want to add both a display field and a filter because we want to be able to filter on item status. So we want to be able to say we want a list of items with this shelving location and this item status. The big difference when adding display fields and filters is that we just talked about using the name fields for the display fields. But for filters, you actually want to use those IDs and org units because behind the scenes, Evergreen is pulling the data based on those unique IDs. If we switch over to the filter tab here, you can see our three filters. We have a filter for shelving location, which is this location ID one, uh, for circulating library and is deleted. Now the location ID and the circulating library both have an operator set as in list. And this means that you're gonna be given a list of possible values to select from. You'll notice a lot of the Sitka templates use in list. Um, and this is so that staff can use the same template over and over again, but pick different filter values to get multiple reports. Now, the library filter, whether it's circulating library, owning library, patron home library, or there's a, a few other library ones you'll see, is really crucial to have in all reports. I think there's maybe two reports on bibliographic records that actually filter based on uh, the subfield nine in the uh, 856, but in almost every other report template, you will see a library filter. And this filter is what enables you to restrict the output to your library's data or data to do with reciprocal borrowing if you participate in that. Running a report without a library filter will violate the reporter privacy waiver that you signed to get reporter permissions. So you wanna make sure when you're coming in and modifying templates that you're not removing library filters, or if you are removing a library filter, you're adding a different one back in. Um, so that's a, a critical filter to make sure your report has. If we look at the is deleted filter, um, it has the operator equals, and it actually has a hard coded filter value of F for false. And you'll see this um, used for data like deleted, holdable, circulate, reference, um, which all use the Boolean. So if we go to actions, having selected that filter and go to change filter value, we get a true false option. So if we wanted a report where we were looking for deleted items or more likely a report where uh, we're looking for holdable or circulatable, as options, we would hit true. In this case, we're just gonna leave it at false. Now we're gonna add a filter for item status and then take a closer look at the options for operator and filter value. But first we're gonna come back to the display fields and we're gonna look because we actually have a display field already for item status. But if you notice, the source path is item copy status inner. And what this is, is during an upgrade, probably the 1 to 311, the name of the table changed. If you run this report template without changing anything, it will still work. But if we add a filter for item status using the new name for the table, it's not gonna work because it's gonna say the display field is looking for copy status, the filter is looking for item status, and it doesn't match. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this field. So actions and remove field. And then we're gonna add it back as a display field uh, like we did before. So we're gonna use the arrow to expand item. We're gonna find item status. We're gonna pick name and raw data and we're gonna add that field. Again, it will add it to the very bottom. We're gonna select it, and from the Actions menu, we're gonna change the column label. So we're gonna put Item Status, and then we're gonna move it 
up the columns here. And we'll leave it there just under circulation modifier. So now we've got, and you know what? I forgot to use nullability. So we're going to do that uh, one more time. So we're going to put nullability in this time and go none nullable name, raw data, add the field. This time it has the inner join. Again, I would rename it, move it up. I'm not going to um, because we actually have the output for this uh, template already. Um, but if I was going to use this template, I would rename it, move it up again. Now we can come over to filters and we're gonna add the filter for item status. Now, instead of using name, this time we're gonna use ID. So we're gonna select ID. We're also gonna select name to clear that. Um, so whatever is bolded is what is selected. And we're going to click raw data. So I'm going to click add field. And now I've got my item status with an inner join uh, filter. By default, the operator is equals. If I select the line and go to actions, I can change the operator. And we have quite a list of different operators here. Um, so when working with data like shelving location, libraries, circulation modifiers, item statuses, you'll often see in list, not in list, and equals used. Um, occasionally you'll see is null, um, such as the template you can run to list items that are missing a circulation modifier, um, or also uh, there is the overdue report where you'll see is null used to find uh, records that don't have a check-in date yet. When working with dates, you'll often see in list equals and the greater and lesser than and between used. And this contains matching substring at the top here. Um, you'll see that in reports when you're entering values for uh, the contents of a mark subfield or barcode prefix. In this case, we're going to change the uh, operator to in list so that we can have a list of the item statuses we want to use. So I'm going to click OK, continue. You can also hard code values into your filters. Um, so if I selected the circulating library here and from the actions menu went to change uh, filter value, I could hard code in a value. For example, I know that the or unit ID for Maple Public Library on the training server is 10. So I could add that as a hard-coded filter. Um, and so then I wouldn't actually have to select Maple every time I go to run the report. Um, and I can change that operator to be equals instead of in list. So I want, I want it to always be the circulating library is Maple. Now, if you are a single branch library, if you go to your public catalog, and we'll just take a moment for the maple one to open here, this physical location here with that number, that is your org unit ID. If you're a multi-branch and you're wanting to hard code things based on uh, your library ID, contact us and we can let you know what your system level and your branch level um, IDs are. Um, but yeah, if you're a single branch, you'll see that in your uh, URL for your public catalog. And it is crucial if you are hard coding filters to add the filter values in exactly as they appear in Evergreen. Um, so if we were to hard code a item status value, um, we would have to either know the ID number or we would have to use the name field instead of the ID field and put the, the item status name in exactly as it appears in Evergreen.
So if we save and run this report, what we're going to get for this one, if I run it on adult fiction with the status of lost, is something that looks like this. So we've got all of the different fields here, and it actually uh, has fields over to the side. But I think Zoom, let me just see if I can, there we go, that makes my taskbar go away. Um, so you can see additional fields are displaying here as well. Now I'm gonna take us back into the reporter and back to the display fields because I just wanna talk about the information from the bibliographic record. Because if you want to include title, author, ISBN, publication year, and record ID, like you can see are included in this one um, when you're running a report that's a list, where you find that information is not very intuitive. So where that information is found, I'm just going to turn off nullability to make it a little easier to see. Um, so you actually have to go into call number and volume and then into bib record. And then you need to scroll down and find the simple record extracts. So I'm gonna click on simple record extracts. And there's where you can pull that basic information about items because it's coming from your bib record. Um, so you can have the title, the author, ISBN, et cetera. This path is included in the handout, um, but I just wanted to highlight it because it's not necessarily where you would expect to find them if you're looking through the different available tables. And now we're going to look at one last uh, report template. So I'm going to take us back to the reporter. And in the shared folders, we're going to this time go into circulation and we're going to go into overdue and others. Again, change my limit output to all. And I'm going to choose the overdues within time span general. Um, because we haven't really looked at dates. So I'm going to clone the selected template. Now, if we look at the filters for this one, we have two filters that are timestamps. We have the due date time and we have the check-in date time. And you can see here's where we have that operator showing as in null, uh, sorry, is null because if the item has a check-in date and time, it's no longer overdue, so we don't want it included in this report. This report gives you two fields for your date, so you can uh, put in two dates to show what's between. When you're working with dates, another one that you'll commonly see for the operator, um, if we go to operator here, I'm actually gonna change this one to in list. And then the field transform, which is currently date, because this is a date we're working with, I'm actually going to go to actions and change transform. And I'm going to change it to year plus month. Um, so if I want monthly information, that's the one you'll see. You'll see it used in a lot of the, or I think all of the monthly circulation uh, templates that you can use. So rather than specifying a date, we're going to tell it to specify year plus month. And if we save this template, and then take a look at it in our folders here, you can see instead of between, you can now pick a date in any month and add it to the list. Overdue reports on a month or showing monthly information may or may not be something that's useful to you. Um, here's what I get if I run it for February. I've got a list of everything on the training server that was checked out um, in February and has not, or was checked out and due in February and has not been returned yet. So the final thing before we finish for today, um, is that as you're working with reports in the reporter, we do recommend that you should review your templates on a regular basis. Co-op support updates Sitka templates when we discover a template isn't working as expected or when we get a report that a template isn't working as expected, um, as well as when changes that come with an upgrade affect templates. How data is stored in Evergreen's tables sometimes change, changes when we upgrade. 
and then we'll update those affected report templates so accurate information is being output. Um, for example, you may remember when we upgraded to 3.9, uh, we had to update all of the templates re re related to patron notes, alerts, and blocks um, because the data for notes, alerts, and blocks for patron notes, alerts, and blocks moved in the database tables with the introduction of the consolidated patron notes tab. So when we do upgrades, we're keeping an eye out for things that are going to affect uh, the report templates. If we're replacing an existing template with a direct replacement, we try and keep the name the same or as similar as possible to make it easy to identify matching replacement templates. And the way you can tell if you have an up-to-date template is by taking a look at the create time here. If the Sitka template has a more recent create time than your template, it means your template is older and it you should think about uh, replacing that template. As well, it's important to make sure that your reports, especially your recurring reports, are running off templates that are saved in your folders. We recommend periodically using the report template and you'll find it under templates, uh, the Sitka templates, local administration, and that's the one called reports run in specified time period by specified library. Um, and this lets you see what reports are being run at your library by which staff and from which templates. Uh, some of you may remember that last summer we stopped all recurring reports that were being run by former staff accounts or staff accounts that no longer had reporter permissions. And we'll continue to do uh, that cleanup, but we do encourage libraries to be proactive and know what reports are being run um, at your library and ensure that you're uh, stopping reoccurring reports that aren't needed anymore um, or when the staff that are running those reports are leaving your library. And that takes us to the end of today's session. I'm just going to stop the recording.